I think that many people are actually using machine learning already in their everyday lives and may not realize it. So, um, for example, when you're engaging with the internet, you're actually um, revealing your preferences and your likes and your dislikes, and those are being picked up by, um, uh, for example, the cookies that are coming onto your computer, and they will adapt to um, your behavior and ho hopefully help you in your progress uh, through, through the internet. Um, Navigation as well. Uh, if you're trying to find the shortest path between two places, um, that is already using machine learning. I think one of the interesting things that people are going to be uh, engaging with with machine learning uh, in the near future is health. And we're already seeing, for example, Watson, who was originally designed to win the game of Jeopardy, a game show, um, but actually now Watson is being used um, uh, for, for health. So, for example, it's looking at uh, scans of uh, body data, trying to understand um, uh, perhaps symptoms of cancer already, um, and uh, an interesting new project uh, looking at why Italians um, live so long. Machine learning and human learning are actually quite similar. Um, machine learning is about um, a, an algorithm or a computer actually engaging with its environment, with data, and adapting according to um, the things that it learns. It, it finds that the program uh, uh, fails to make the right predictions, and it will rebalance itself, in, in some sense, in order to make better predictions next time. Now, I think that's very similar to the way that a human learns. A human is actually engaging with its environment and learning from its, its failure. So um, machine learning has an aspect of kind of uh, uh, an evolutionary aspect to it, which I think is quite new to this area of um, artificial intelligence. Uh, people might have heard of AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, I think more people have heard of that maybe than machine learning. Um, actually, the survey that we did, uh, only 9% of the uh, people that we surveyed um, actually knew this term machine learning. So artificial intelligence, actually, its original goal was Turing's, uh, Alan Turing's aim to, to somehow make a machine um, have the sort of intelligence that a human might have. Um, in particular, could you program a computer actually to convince you that it is human if you chatted with it? Um, but I think it, artificial intelligence has evolved since then. And actually, we're interested in what sort of um, intelligence uh, a machine, a unique sort of intelligence a, a machine might have. But machine learning has a slightly different quality to it, and has perhaps a more specific part of artificial intelligence, which is the idea that um, the program is going to change and evolve in according to its interaction. So actually, by the end, um, the programmer might not know actually um, how the program is actually written because it has been changing um, as it's been uh, interacting. Uh, so there might be, you know, might be able to look inside, um, see the actual program, but not know why necessarily it's decided to, to weight its decisions in that particular way. So I think there's certainly a lot of connections between artificial intelligence and machine learning. The interesting thing about artificial intelligence, it's really captured, I think, um, the public imagination through film, because there have been so many interesting examples of films, um, Ex Machina, for example. Uh, and actually, I, I think this has done uh, the whole community a disservice, because people are rather freaked out, frankly, by you know, the, the Terminator sort of story. Are these things going to take over? So that is partly what this um, whole uh, investigation by the Royal Society is about. You know, are, are there things that we should be frightened of, or actually are these things which are going to be very powerful for us and we, sh we shouldn't be sort of freaked out by all the things we see when we go to the cinema. I think machine learning has become such uh, a big deal because of big data. We now have access to so much more data that um, a machine can interact with. Um, so I think the sort of problems where uh, machine learning is going to make great progress is, is where it can actually um, uh, be exposed to a lot of data. So one of the big challenges for artificial intelligence was always computer vision. Um, that was one of the things that humans do incredibly well to look at a picture and interpret it, and computers found very difficult. And it was partly because we were trying to program the thing from the bottom upwards. But now we can expose um, 
a, an algorithm to many pictures and it can learn as it's going along. So I think that the sort of the ability for a machine actually to, to view its environment and interpret it and, and read it is one of the places where there'll be a lot of progress. But frankly, wherever there's data, machine learning will be, uh, will, be, will be successful. So for example, recommendations on the internet, um, navigation, you know, every time we drive, we're giving the machine new information um, and that's being used to adapt and change. Health as well, that will be one of the big growth places because a computer can actually read so much data in one go, whilst uh, uh, you know, a human doctor may not be able to keep uh, track of the, all the, the great progress that is happening. I think it's really important that the Royal Society has got this um, project looking into the impact that machine learning will have on society in the future. Um, at the moment, only 9% of people that we surveyed actually know what machine learning is or even heard of it. But that is going to change in the near future. And I think it's important that society understand the potential of this tool and, and maybe also address the fears that they will have. You know, that already um, films are beginning to fuel uh, those fears. And so are, are they real fears or are they just things invented by Hollywood? So I think it's all about transparency. We need to tell um, uh, society what the potential of these things are, where it can go. And so it's about looking into the future and trying to make some uh, predictions about what might be out there.